Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this episode we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I am Mickey, this is Mick Flippins. Uh, I'm an eBay reseller full-time, going on to my second month full-time. So, I'm going to be going over my uh, top 10 uh, favorite sales for the two months I've been doing this. Um, now, I have been an antique dealer in the past uh full time so but not ebay primarily so but then i have been selling on ebay for years so um i'm no stranger to it but this is the first time i've done it full time and listed aggressively with the uh, many items so uh let's get to it the top 10 sales number 10 was an auction one of the few auctions i actually ran for the year um, in my short two months, uh, I've been doing pretty much all buy it nows. I find auctions just haven't been working for me. Because uh, two of the items on this list I'll talk about, which this is one I thought could have done better. I should have done better, but I paid 50 cents for this item in an auction about 10 years ago, which is the cheapest I've bought anything for at an auction anyway. Most auctions don't go below two or three dollars. And uh, but anyway, what it was was a Looney Tunes animation show of Wiley e. Coyote being crushed by a big snowball, and it was actually uh, had a certificate of authenticity from Warner Brothers, which was really cool. Um, now, compared when I was looking at comps, it was you know I think it should have done a little better. To it, it sold for a hundred and ten dollars. Uh, um, so, I mean, I can't complain at 50 cents. I mean, I paid 50 cents, but looking at comps, I felt like it should have done maybe two, three, maybe 400. So, in the auction, it ended up selling for $110. It didn't get any bids in the last day none it just just sold for what it was at about two days before so and but i mean 50 cents again i can't complain i held on to it for a long time because i i liked it um but i, I think it could have done better perhaps if i had done a buy it now on that but i also didn't know what to list it as so there we have that and i just wanted to leave a little side note here uh the buyer of this item, the Warner Brothers animation cell, messaged me after they got it. Very happy. They were ecstatic to get it at that price, obviously. <laughs> but they sent me a picture of it displayed on their wall with a bunch of other Wiley e. Coyote stuff. So that does make me feel a little bit better about the sale. I mean, I'm not trying to be a greedy, money hungry reseller. It is nice to get these items with people that will actually love and cherish them and honor them the way they deserve to be cherished. I had that thing in my collection for 10 years, so and now it's going to be in somebody else's collection for a long time, so that's that's cool. So that does make the sale where it could have been a little bit better feel a little bit better. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I forgot to mention it the first time I recorded it. And number nine. Number nine was a Nestle Cocoa Mix soda fountain can that I paid eight dollars for. Uh -huh. Nestle, you stupid dog, they make quick. Gives you gives milk that that delicious chocolatey flavor. Nestle's quick. You're shouting. <laughs> and ended up selling for one hundred and twenty-five dollars, free shipping. Uh, which this piece was really cool. It was in immaculate condition. Um, and comps, it was the only red. I didn't. I couldn't find any red ones online. They had green ones. Um, so I threw it up for. I think I started at one hundred and ninety nine ninety seven and ended up selling for one hundred and twenty five after about two three weeks. Uh, one hundred and twenty five free shipping. So eight dollars, not bad. A uh, little profit there. Number eight 
this was another auction, and again, something I think could have done better had I done it by it now. This is a, it was a mail pouch tobacco sign that uh, depicted the Native Americans making food or making tools or something, but it had great graphics on it. And the cool thing about this was, I bought this at a flea market for $15, and the top part that said mail pouch tobacco, somebody had painted over that with like this chalk paint. And I didn't realize that when I bought it until one day I was actually at an antique show trying to sell it and I got I was scraping the paint and I was like this is coming off really easy and then I just took a little water and a damp rag and I was able to wipe it all off and was able to find the, the mail pouch was still there so that was cool but uh, that ended up selling for $157.50 which not bad for a $15 buy uh, but again I like I said I think it could have done a little better had I listed it by it now at the auction I, I felt like there was comps in the two to three hundred range so um it had its issues though so maybe that was the right price for it so but it is what it is again not a bad profit uh, now number seven the Canon power shot uh camera uh this is something I wouldn't normally buy I try to stick to vintage and antique but watching youtubers I've uh, opened my mind to new things, and I bought this camera from another picker for $4. It was in great shape, but it didn't have any charger or anything, so I did end up having to buy a charger for it, which was like $10. So I had I ended up having $10, $15 invested into this thing, and I ended up selling it for $114.97, free shipping. So, again, not a bad profit, you know, and... Now I'm going to start looking out for more cameras in the future for sure. I got another one on my rack. I've um, sent out a few offers on. I answered a few questions. It's a video camera, not a still camera. But um, it's another camp. No, this one's a Sony. But, I mean, like, like it's opened my mind to newer things. that, And I've probably passed over dozens, if not hundreds, of cameras over the years at yard sales and flea markets because I'm just in the antique vintage mode in my mind so another good profit and I'm just keep an eye out for those from now on number six was a rare version of a Spanish Civil War helmet an M1921 helmet um, this was something I bought at a flea market with several other U.S. style helmets, which I think I ended up paying ten dollars a piece for each helmet, which that's a great deal for any helmet. And this one I had never seen before, and I thought it was really unique. And I was kind of hoping it was a U.S. experimental um, style helmet, because in between World War One, World War Two, the U.S. experimented a lot with helmets in different designs until they came up with. The design we saw in World War II, which was the M1 helmet. I'm a bit of a helmet nerd. I got several helmet books. And I had never seen this one, so I was hoping it was one of those. They were like a rare experimental prototype helmet, which it wasn't. But it it was still, it was considerably rare for what it was, which was Spanish. And I'm more of a U.S. military collector, and that's what I know mostly about. Um, but long story short, that ended up selling for 165 free shipping. Um, so, and I paid $10, so another good profit. And one of those things I bought just because I'd never seen before, knew it was unique. And, uh, now I know what they look like, and um, a nice profit. So, and number five, rounding out number five, was one of my favorite buys. And that was one of my most recent buys, too. Uh, it was actually featured in one of my videos a couple of videos ago. Uh, for $10, I bought a stack of photos at a flea market. Um, and But what was unique about these photos, they were military, but they were the Flying Tigers, the 74th Fighter Squadron. Um, but they were post-war, post-World War II. These were pictures were from the 1950s, which... It's still really cool, 
but had they been World War II, they would have been an extremely valuable stack of photos because the Flying Tigers are extremely collected, and rare stuff to find. So, and I mean, even post war stuff, rare to find because I mean, I did end up selling them for $174.97 free shipping. So, again, great profit, especially for a $10 buy. I knew it was a good buy. It was one of those things that that's the thing with military stuff. Sometimes there's no comps for this kind of stuff. So, you kind of just got to throw a price out there and see what sticks. I threw $175 on it. That was my asking price. I threw out a few offers, but then one night I woke up and it had sold for $174.97 to my asking price. And the guy received him, he was very happy. So I love that. So and I love buying military stuff. That's one of my my bread and butter, as you can tell from pretty much the rest of this list and most of this list. Um let's see. Number four. Number four. Again, a pretty recent buy. For $5 at a flea market, I bought a bag of patches that I didn't know what they were at the time. I knew they were military. I had a suspicion they were British. I was wrong. I know nothing. Nothing. <laughs> they turned out to be German, World War II. Uh, what they were were German um, motor transport patches, sleep patches. And I think there was 24 of them in this bag, and they were all original. And I paid, like I said, $5 for the whole bag. And on the regular, these things sell for $15, $20, between $10 and $15, $20. So I ended up putting them up as a lot, rather than listing them individually and selling them for $10, $15 bucks over the next five years and selling them all between now and the next five years. So I put up a lot. I think it was for... 200 199 something like that um i sent several offers somebody sent me an offer 150 i accepted five dollars 150 again these are prices without my you know fees and stuff so i mean take that into consideration the profit is a little less than what i'm quoting here but the profit's obviously still pretty good margin so the German patches, that was number four, German motorsport transport. And number three, not military. So, and this was another one of those things where if you've never seen it before, buy it. You know, and that's what I did. Uh, it was a uh, trumpet call harmonica made by Honer. I think I'm pretty sure it was Honer. And it was just, here's a picture of it. The thing was wild. Um, knew it was unique. It hadn't bits of the original box. The box was busted up and you could tell it was uh, antique, definitely old. I think it was from the 20s or 30s. Uh, made in Germany. Um, and I guess the newer ones are made in Japan or something like that. And they sell for a little bit less. Uh, long story short, this that sold ended up selling for $249.97 free shipping. One of those things I listed and had sold a few hours later. And I was one of, it was one of those things where did I ask enough? Um, because there was none of the German made ones on there, but again, I paid two dollars for this thing at a flea market, so and I bought a bunch of really great stuff with it that I'd already made my money on 30 times probably by now. So this was just pure profit. Uh even though I technically paid two dollars for the item, it Sold for two hundred and fifty dollars, two forty nine ninety seven, minus my fees. So another cool one. Um, so number two, this was a unique piece again, military. One one of those things where you really don't know how to price it, and you just need to throw a price on it. And this piece was a Vietnam era American flag. It was an American flag, but it was from the Vietnam era. And it came with this tag in Provenance. The picker I bought it from said he had bought it from an estate too, whose family had it was selling this, and uh, of the man who was a Marine during the Vietnam War, and he had supposedly flown this flag on his tank in Vietnam, and it had a tag which was attached to it. It had this Provenance on it, which was the closest to Provenance as I had, which is. Pretty much, that's more than you normally get, especially at a flea market. Um, I took a gamble at fifty dollars, 
and I've had it for a while. I remember I took it to the show of shows last year, which is a big military show in Kentucky. Um, but I, it, it's a flag. It's hard to display. I had it folded up in a case. I didn't have it folded up nicely. I probably should have folded it up, you know, the proper way that you fold an American flag into a triangle. Um, but it didn't sell there. And I've had it since. And I, I maybe tried to sell it one or another one or two other times at an antique show where we were there, but um, I had recently put it up a week or two ago for it. It was four hundred and forty nine ninety seven, and it sat it had several watchers for a couple weeks. I sent out a few offers, and again, it was one of those things. I woke up in the morning, somebody had purchased it for my asking price of four forty nine ninety seven. So fifty dollars I made for fifty. Well. After eBay fees, probably more like 400 After I paid 500 so 350 somewhere around there. And before we get to number one, my most favorite and highest profit item of the two months I've been selling, we have some honorable mentions, one of which is a Mint on Card Kenner RoboCop Ultra Force Police uh, action figure. RoboCop! His orders... Get the evil vandals now! Uh, the Night, uh, Night Stalkers, a uh, special version. This is something I bought at a local indoor flea market a few weeks ago for $5. And it didn't sell for a lot. And that's this list. This list isn't necessarily a, my biggest profit. It's just some of my coolest items with some of my highest profits. And that's what RoboCop was. But it's just a really cool buy and uh, just a cool toy. Uh, that sold for $60 free shipping. And um, number two honorable mention is a Jack Daniels advertising statue, which was made out of styrofoam that I bought while on vacation for $5 and sold for $120. And one more, just because it was really cool and it's one of my most recent really quick flips, bought it the day I sold, or sold it the buy. Sold it the day I bought it. Uh, Star Wars Beer Stein. Paid $15. Sold it for $49.97. After fees, I probably doubled my money. Uh, so, that was three honorable mentions. I had more, but I'm not going to bore you with those. Number one. The number one, my biggest and most impressive, I guess, uh, profit-making sale within my two months of reselling here. Captain Hook Pirate Toy, which was battery operated, uh, made in Japan, vintage tin toy, it's still working. That I paid $35 for, and it sold for $1,250, free shipping, I think it was $17 to ship, and around after fees, you know, I did well over $1,000 profit on that piece. So, that was a really good my um wish those happened every week and then and, but that's the picking game you know i bought it at a flea market for 35 dollars and i thought i was taking a gamble at 35 because i deal in vintage toys but 80s 90s stuff mostly so tin toys 1950s tin battery operated toys are out of my comfort zones so to speak, so I I was taking a gamble of $35, and then I tried to look that thing up, and I found one that sold for like $12,000 at a high-end toy auction the day I bought mine, but it had its original box and was in immaculate condition, which mine was in good condition, and it worked, and it's one of the first, it was the first time I've used a video on any of my eBay listings, which was kind of neat, uh, because I'm sure it definitely helped my sale in that, in that case, especially on such a high ticket item. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, those are my top 10 uh, profit making items from the year 2023. Um, like I said, I've only been doing this for two months, so I, I'd say that's a pretty, still a pretty cool list for only two months. And I still had to be pretty picky and choosy, so I can only imagine what it's like for somebody that's sold thousands of items at this point. 
So going into 2024, I'm hoping uh, these sales just because my sales just keep getting more consistent the more I list. So uh, I have some pretty high hopes for 2024. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're going to have a great New Year's. I hope your sales are great. Um, let me know in the comments. Uh, one of your best sales of the year, one of your biggest profit makings. I'd love to hear about what you guys are buying and selling. So, if anybody's even watching this, <laughs> so uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, click like and subscribe. Uh, catch you next time.